This is Felix Solis, and you were listening to Monday Morning Podcast. Felix, um, so um, I have to say, sometimes you get a good feel on your guests when you go to their Instagram page because, you know, you can only read so many interviews and go through IMDb. You know, I think everyone's a- aware of the amazing work you've done. But I, I want to ask you a few things in your personal life that aren't too personal that I think you like talking about. Uh, sure. Tell me tell me about uh, Jackie Robinson and how Jackie Robinson has changed your life. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, he rescued me about five, maybe almost five years ago. I was uh, in Los Angeles, and, uh, and this was just be- like maybe the Christmas before the pandemic started. And we're, my partner and I were just floating. We had just had some Chinese food and we happened to walk past this one pet store in LA and they had like their obligatory weekend group of animals out to try and, you know, have them adopted and rescued. And, uh, and we both were kind of like, hmm, that's it. We just sort of noticed them. And then it just stuck in my head and it stuck in my head. Like, why was I so reactionary to just seeing these dogs in the street in front of this pet shop, Petco, whatever, I can't remember. And, and it stuck with me. And about 10, 10, maybe 12 days later, I said to my partner, I said, what do you think about, uh, she said, let's just go and just, let's just, we're just going to go. We're just going to look. And I was like, great. So we went to Downey, uh, rescue animal, uh, the Downey animal rescue center. And, and it's a it's a high kill shelter, right? It's not a, oh. a, and they're no longer. I don't think there are any any uh, allowed to be this high kill. But at the time, there were high kill. It was a high kill shelter. So I walked in, and again, I just walked in, and I was like, I'm not looking at anything. I'm not. I'm just getting a feel. I'm getting a feel. And there he was, sitting in his in his cage. So I won't call it a crate. And uh, and uh, and he was the quietest one there. Everyone else was just jumping and screaming and hollering, and he just was just sitting there like mm. most of the photos that you've seen on instagram it's just sitting there it's like hmm so i went out and i said to the woman who took care of him i said the, this uh this black and white coat pity that you got at the end there she said oh yeah that's jack london they had named him jack <laughs> and i was like okay jack london cool uh what's his deal and she said uh oh well he's he's been here for three weeks and he will uh was probably going to get put on the truck maybe tomorrow morning or something. And I said, put on the truck? What do you mean put on the truck? And then she explained to me what that meant, which it meant that at certain, at a cer- after a certain time, if they're not taken home or rescued or adopted, they get put down. And uh, and I was like, can I meet him? And they said, yeah, absolutely. And he brought they brought him out. He was bouncing all over the walls. As soon as they brought him out the cage, he was just all over, like literally banging into walls, running around, <sighs> no idea where he was. And and then he came over. He came over to me, and I looked at him. He jumped on me, and I know, I know, I've had dogs my whole life, so I know, I know, not, I know not to give him any attention when he does things like that. You kind of show that if you know you turn your back or you just kind of don't give him the acknowledgement that that behavior was accepted, uh, they get the message quickie, real quick. Mm-hmm. They're smart dogs, and uh, and so he did. And I said, I just kind of crouched down next to him, and he, I asked him to sit. He did, on introduction. Uh, eyes wide open, and I just asked him if he wanted to be my friend, mm. and that was it, you know. And uh, and then it was rough because then the next day we had him, we put we 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 had him fixed because you couldn't take him out of the shelter without being fixed, right? right. And then we were waiting for him to you know sort of come out of the grogginess of the surgery, and because again we didn't know this dog, I had to tether him to my car, which was awful for me to do, but I had to do it because I just didn't know this dog yet, you know. Right, right throw him in my truck and all of a sudden I'm driving and he gets violent or he gets reactionary. So I tethered him and, and it happened to be, and it sounds poetic, but it actually truly did happen, Derek. It, it, it was that I, we were driving home from Downey and in LA, it doesn't, obviously, you know, it doesn't rain and it started pouring. It was pouring out. It just started pouring out. And I went, what of all nights that I'm bringing home this poor dog, it's thundering, it's lightning, it's raining in Los Angeles. And he was crying in a way that I had never heard a dog cry before. Mm. And uh, I just didn't. I said, something's wrong. There's got to be something wrong with him. Because I've heard dogs whimper. I've heard dogs, you know, whine. But I just never had heard a sound come out of a dog's mouth like this. And I and I turned to my partner. My partner unhooked her seatbelt. She jumped into the back of my truck. And I said, what are you doing? She said, I can't take it anymore. She unhooked him. And the crying stopped. And I looked in the rearview mirror, and he was curled in her lap. 
And I thought, and that's when I thought I like, I was like, okay, I don't, I'm not, I don't practice religious religion. I'm not a religious person, but I kind of went universe, anything higher power than who I am. I've gotten the message. This dog will live the rest of his life uh, in the best possible way he can. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the that's the knucklehead. I didn't want to change his his name too much because I didn't I didn't want to go through the process of that. I know what that's like. It's it's it, they say it's an easy process, but for me personally, I didn't want him to feel le- uh, all, all of it's, he's already in a strange place. I didn't want to give him even more of a strange thing to have to relearn his identity. So I just took that and I and I chose somebody who I found him in Los Angeles. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I'm no longer there, but I thought, who is somebody that I believe stood up to adversity, overcame tremendous amounts of of, of pressure and and backlash and and uh, all kinds of things that you know are awful that have occurred to our our our, our civilization and history. And I thought, oh yeah that guy <laughs> so i was like i am gonna have to get used to me calling you jackie robinson so yeah and, and you could tell he's clearly changed your life i mean i'm looking at these pictures because i mean i have three dogs in my house i'm looking at yeah. these pictures uh, there's one of him on your lap and i, mm-hmm. I almost start, i was at work doing this research i yeah. almost was getting them and i'm not saying this to like sound over the top i was getting emotional just looking because i know what that's i i get it i get the yeah. love you know and and it was hard. The, I'm not going to lie; it wasn't easy. I mean, it took almost two, almost two and a half years before I, uh, what I consider to be called, uh, I felt his love. Yeah, about two and a half years. I went to school. I trained myself. I I didn't train him. I trained myself to train him. I sat in my home and watched him for hours on end, for as long as I could, just watched him, observed him, was like, oh, he just did that with his ears and now he's doing that. Oh, he just perked up, what was that, this, the, I was literally just observing him for as much as I possibly could. Right. We went through some behavioralists, we went through some trainers, and at the end of the day, it ultimately had to do with the fact that I had to win his trust in a way that 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 he probably hadn't trusted anyone since he was born. You know, he was probably a bait dog. He's scarred, so so we can uh, safely make the assumption he was a bait dog of some kind or some kind of uh, not fight dog because he has not a bone of aggression in him. And and so I know that it's not that he could have just like I said been a bait dog. Right. And uh, and, uh, and so yeah, but it was about two two and a half years in Derek when when I when I uh, I was sitting on the couch. I asked him, he, I, I, we had worked together to understand that he doesn't just jump on the couch. He looks at me, he asks for permission. I give him permission and he gets on the couch. Uh, not a control thing, just a simple, very easy way for him to understand and not, I set him up for success, not for failure by doing that. And he, uh, and he jumps on to the couch, and he, which he had done usually, but then he laid down on his back and he opened his legs and his stomach and I went... <sighs> Oh crap! I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and my impulse was just to shove my face in his belly and start kissing him, but I didn't. I just did just like this, and I just kind of looked over and kind of pretended like I didn't really see it, and then I just non slowly, shalomly, like just nonchalantly put my hand on his chest, and then just started scratching or whatever. And he didn't move, he didn't budge, and I was like, "Here we we've we've arrived to a place where." You know, and it's still, it's still, he's a, he's a terrier. So there's still moments when he'll look at me, he'll be like, I don't feel like walking this way. And I have to go, I know. But it's not your choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, that's, yeah, but, that's, that's yeah. beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It was a while. I mean, I, I, I didn't, uh, it was a while. There was a moment. There were a couple moments when I asked my partner, I was like, did I make a mistake? Like this is it, is it does he love me at all does he love me at all because I, I love him to death yeah <laughs> he loved me at all and she's like give him time give him time sure enough yeah so now wow. we're at a place where yeah we're yeah. at a, where we're good and all he really does is patiently wait for me to sit on the couch so he can jump on it and then get in my lap so oh that's beautiful but, and and yeah. on the same theme of of instagram there is a really really wonderful photo of you and, and philip seymour hoffman um yeah. 
uh and you and i are like pretty much the same age so yeah. we, we, we kind of know we, we've i mean you know him obviously more than i did but like just we, we've sought we've seen his work progress you know um what can you tell me about that photo really really kind of a really nostalgic great photo yeah we were um i became a member of a theater company that he very shortly after i would say within the year became co-artistic director of it's a theater company from new york called the labyrinth theater company and uh and it began as the lab which was uh an acronym for latinos actors base it was a latino actor base theater company that it started with a couple of latinos gary perez and john ortiz and uh, Paul Calderon, David Zayas, like all these great, great actors who who had just decided they were going to get together and start a group and do the kinds of things that they weren't necessarily allowed to do or not given an opportunity to do because they were Latin, right? Yeah, yeah. And so and so uh, so they started the group and then it slowly grew and it slowly grew and as they expanded and allowed for it to become less of just a specific Latino thing, but more a let's get a group of people together who all believe the same thing, which is if we are not allowed to do it on the outside world, here you can. Here you're allowed to do it in this company. Yeah. And part of that was was finding uh, through others who had knew him from doing a, a Merchant of Venice, I think, on a, on a regional gig. They brought him in, and then quickly thereafter, he, he quickly was asked to become co-artistic director. In that same year, uh, my dear friend David Zayas said to the company, hey, there's this actor who I, who I love, and I've seen him do a lot of New York theater. He's done a lot of the small 60 house theater plays that we all grew up doing, and, and uh, and and said to to phil you know what do you think you why don't you take a look at him and and uh and then he asked me to do a reading of a play that he was going to direct it was the first play he had ever directed so uh uh a wonderful play called in arabia we'd all be kings it was written by stephen athlete girgis and and uh and he was like he's great he's great and then we just it was immediate there was just an immediate friendship that was uh that lasted uh Till his his till his till his very last day with us, but but um, yeah, it, it was uh, it was uh, it was very he was a very almost passionate to he was a great actor and even greater friend, but but uh, truly a great actor, but an even greater friend, and uh, and uh, and we just yeah we just sort of you know we were all in the same company. He was artistic director for quite some time. We did another. A uh, play that helped the company sort of put it, put itself on the map it was a play called uh, uh, Our Lady of 121st Street, and uh, second play he had directed, also written by Stephen Girgis, and and uh, and then we just sort of we we were both Yankee fans. We'd go to the Yankee game together. We were Jet fans. We'd go to the Jet game together. You know, although yeah. he's, he was from Buffalo, so he had he would wear his Bills hat to the Jets <laughs> game. And I'd be like, oh, dude, we're gonna, you're gonna get me in trouble over here, but whatever, it's fine. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, we just sort of we were we were always uh, he was his uh, his his uh, his thing his thing to me was uh, uh, he'd always say to me, you know, Felix, I'm 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 very grateful that you're working on this play with me because because I don't have to worry about you. You don't ever I don't ever have to worry about what you do and how you're going to do it. And, what you do and wow. you I never have to worry about you um he also taught me a very a very hard lesson in industry too we were uh we were doing a, a the smaller independent production of our lady of 121st street and then we had been offered a, a commercial run at the union square theater that daryl roth had, had produced and she's a big theater producer she does all the cirque du soleil stuff and uh and she said uh and she wanted to produce the play and bring it up and it was going to be a commercial run it was the biggest production that the company had ever been offered mm. And everyone who had done the original production pretty much signed on. There were some that couldn't, but but uh, they recast. But I was the last person to technically agree to come on. And it was only because that, at the time I had had a conversation with my manager at the time who said, hey, listen, wait, pilot season is coming right now. So maybe you don't want to be tied down to a play. You want to just keep yourself free and all of that. And so I hemmed and hawed before I told my company, yeah, I'm on board. And I, re I remember sitting on my stoop in, in Chelsea where I grew up and, and I get a call 
and it's Phil. And Phil says, you know, uh, hey, hey, Flex. He used to call me Flex. He's like, hey, Flex, uh, what's going on? I mean, we're, we're ready to start rehearsals. I mean, I don't know what's going on. And I said, no, I don't know. I was talking to my manager. She said to me, I should probably wait for for uh, pilot season to come in. And he was like, pilot? Okay. Do you want to do you want to act, Felix? Do you want to act, <laughs> <laughs> or do you, you want to just wait to act? Because right now you're being an opportunity to act. You're being offered an opportunity to act. And I was like, "You are damn right." Mm. I'm sitting here. I got a bird in the hand. I'm gonna let that go for possibly two in the bush. Right. Right. And I, up to that point, I had never really had an opportunity to realize that. And he just said, hey, man, if you want to act, you're being given an opportunity to act. So is that what you want to do? Or do you want to wait to act? Yeah. Harry, that same that same hour I called and I said, I'm not doing pilot season. We're in, we're in. And truth be told, the, doing the production was something that was very helpful for my career in the long run. So yeah. Do- me before it seen me we had won awards uh, sold out houses the entire run and it, it gave me more than whatever i could have possibly got from that pilot season but that's phil see that's not the actor that's what i mean by saying that was my friend right who called me and told me that you know yeah yeah that's it, it, it sometimes you need that honesty right that you're you you won't get and i and i also have to say um not to name drop because you brought it up paul calderon has been on the podcast boy is he oh, a beautiful. great guy Look, yeah, he, he he he's a boy. He's an actor. Members of our theater company, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um. So lot, you know, not ever teaching me a thing. Yeah, yeah. stand up guy. And, and, yeah. and you know, um, I wanted to ask you the last thing before we get into your your acting career here. Um, you are the real deal when it comes to Star Wars. So when I started my research, it said you know he loves Star Wars. And I'm like, a lot of people say they love it, but they. No. And then I'm going into it. I'm like, holy cow! This man really loves Star Wars. I mean. The memorabilia there's you at comic cons like you are the real deal star wars fan you are no pretender you're no no the, yeah <laughs> this is a uh this is an 81 snow snow trooper it it uh, it comes with the cannon and uh yeah these are the these are the power of the force line so this was the stuff that came, this was they called this the muscle line because the figures were all sort of muscular and chunky, yeah, yeah, right? Jack, yeah. yeah, jacked, right, right, right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try to travel with with some stuff with me here. I got uh, here's my uh, here's a Tuscan Raider right there. They're, they're in very Lola, cool because of Mandalorian. But these are all sort of sitting on my desk, and I and I go across the universe. I'm not just a sort of original trilogy too. Here's a super battle droid from the first, you know, the prequel trilogies, which is great. In this this next upcoming uh, Star Wars celebration, which I'll be at at Anaheim, uh, Attack of the Clones celebrates 20 years from its (laughs) 20 years ago. Attack of the Clones came out. (laughs) Isn't wow, that that's insane! Isn't that crazy, yeah. but anyway, yeah, I, ha- I horse around with them. I got some good stuff over here. Oh, this is great too. This is a uh, these paint apps that come with the the Jawas these days. These Jawas were, oh, I don't have a light with me, but these Jawas have these uh, top lights that if you shine a light down in here, you'll see the two uh, orange eyes. Uh, yellow orange yeah. eyes glow, but yeah, these paint apps are no longer like these are just these used to be normal. This was like the uh, the legacy collection line, which is like you yeah, know, you put them together, right? You paint them, you put them together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also build, yeah. I got some build stuff, and yeah. So, yeah. so why did, how does it? Why does it hit? Why is it home hit home so hard for you, Felix? What is it about Star Wars? I mean, I, everyone everyone has their own answer, right? What what is yeah. your answer? I remember being a kid. Uh, Empire Strikes Back had, had had come out shortly. I, I was uh, too young to get to to see the the what people call A New Hope. I yeah. call Star Wars. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, I, I was too young to see Star Wars. Uh, I, I was born in seventy one. It came out in seventy seven, and my dad was just like, "We were, we're working. We're too busy to go to the movies." Right. So, but but then when when Empire Strikes Back came out, I was able to see it. I loved it. Uh, it was fascinating. I had never, I had never experienced plot twist before, right? So when he leans down and tells him he's his dad, I was, right? 
and uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like I literally, alongside Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, went no, right, <laughs> right. Um, but uh, but uh, then shortly after, there was a Christmas that I um, not very many, but not very many people know this, but the, but I uh, I'd given my mom and my dad a huge list of toys that I wanted for Christmas. Just this. It's just it, 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 unrealistic list of things, right. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and then I remember hearing. You know, they didn't know I was listening, but I was in my room, and I remember hearing them not argue. I don't think they were arguing. I think they were just frustrated. They were super frustrated that they had no idea how they were going to earn enough money to get all these toys. Mm. And I heard that, and I thought, first of all, you mean there's? You mean Santa Claus is? not Santa Claus is not getting me all of these. Like, wait, what? <laughs> what? right? So there's mm. that. Yeah. And on top of that, I went, oh, crap, they're going to have to pay for these things. I'm not going to have that happen. So I went back to my room. I redid the list. I had four figures on it. Yoda, Darth Vader, and two stormtroopers. And I wanted two stormtroopers because you needed more than one because I knew there was a troop gone, right? That's right. Right. So, so, so I went back and I said to them, look, I want a different, this is not what I want. I want this now. Can you please have Santa do that? And they were, they kind of shrugged it off or whatever, but it was in that moment, was nine, 10, maybe 11. I can't even remember whatever it was. 81, I was 11, 12. And I just, uh, I just remember going, that's not fair to them. Uh, so when I grow up uh, and I start making money, I will buy all my toys myself. I will I will collect them myself and I will be that. Now, skip to learning about girls and learning about <laughs> tattoos and bikes and motorcycles and graffiti and break dancing and da 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 da. Uh it all kind of and then about I'm gonna say about eleven years ago, I uh I picked up I picked up a uh it was a, uh, it was again one of those muscular, it was a power of the force Han Solo. And I was like, my guy, I mean, Han Solo can't be Han Solo without Chewbacca, so I gotta get Chewbacca. <laughs> here, here we go. <laughs> and was, to the point where, like, my partner who I've been together with for 12 years was like, you all right? And I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> no, because it's like 13 boxes sitting there waiting for you. And I was like, oh, no, no, that's no, just some stuff that, and now she's just like, She's the oh no! <laughs> but I, but I, but I, I love it. Is there, is there a um? Because, like I said, there's tons of, you know, and you could be on the other side of the table at most of these comic cons, right? I mean, your acting career. Pe- uh, yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, yes, and no. Yes, in so much as that, uh, I would love to be. Uh, no, in so much as that, I don't. Uh, I'm I'm such a fan, right? I'm such a fan. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that I don't. I mean, I've just recently been asked to 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 entertain ideas of pursuing uh, getting involved in some kind of universal project or kind of any kind of Star Wars universe thing, and I have have actually humbly said I I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah. Not because if you become it, then all of a sudden you're no longer right. It's not that. It's just I don't. It's just too much. It's too much of a fandom for me to to feel like you know. I don't know. Like I want to do it. So yes and no. Right. But being said, uh, yeah, no. I I flew myself to Chicago. I found a hotel, uh, an Airbnb right around the corner from the convention center. I was there the whole time for celebration. Yeah. Airbnb. Yeah, dude. I, I just bought my ticket this morning for Anaheim. That's that's. I had bought it. I had bought it before the pandemic, and then they canceled it. And I was like, all right, well, I don't know if it's ever going to go again. So I asked for a refund, and then I got a, a message saying March fifteenth at nine a.m. there'll be some extra tickets. And I literally was online in 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 at the at the bed on the bed like this morning, going queued up in line, and then just got my ticket. So yeah. Wow, that's is there a character that resonates like so? I have to say, you know, for me growing up, like I was born in 73, like I said, we're, we're almost mm-hmm. identical in age, so mm-hmm. we had the same experiences. 
uh, for me, it's it's those moments with you. And I know he's he's popular now because of Baby Yoda, but for some reason, Yoda hits me hard. Like he hits mm-hmm. me hard, and mm-hmm. the conversations he has with Luke, mm-hmm. like I almost, and, and it's just like the perfect amount of screen time. Like it's not oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Yoda just says what he has to say, and he drops the mic, and he's gone. He's done. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who does it for you, Felix? Uh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, no, you're gonna think I'm full of it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I want you to know this was not rehearsed. Okay, you ready, Felix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It's the same one. So good. They're so good. <laughs> they're so good because they're actual. It's like it's. I w- I would say it's like a. F- fraction of an inch off from 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 one to one scale it's dead on yeah 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 they're great they're great they're great i i uh i always there was always uh there was always that thing in the back of my head that was like who who's teaching this like who where does this come from yeah this force this idea this all where does this come from and so and I always had that question from watching and and, and so on and there and then you know, but very few people knew about it. Like I, I've been a Star Wars fan for a long time and nobody knew about it. Like like nobody knew about it. It's like as positive <laughs> as it comes. But uh but uh yeah, I like Yoda as well. I'm a, I'm a Yoda collector. Uh I recently I literally just before I got on with you, I was at this great store in Los Angeles on the in the Burbank area called Blast from the Past. And I was just like, they do like vintage toys and action figures and all kinds of good stuff. And I came across this, I'd left it in the car, but I came across a sheet of stamps. 2007, the United States Postal Service released these 41 cent stamps and it's Yoda, a sheet of Yoda stamps. And I was like, great, picked it up. I have a Yoda focus. Will you get those framed? Will you get those stamps framed? think so yeah yeah yeah, you have to yeah yeah Yeah, it's a clean sheet hasn't been bent it hasn't been like it's just a super clean sheet it's inside of a bag and board a comic book bag and board and so i thought absolutely yeah 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 we haven't even touched on ozark and the fact that we have two identical yodas is unbelievable it's good it's it's unbelievable like and you get it, like you're so diehard. I I love it. Oh my yeah. god, I love it. So, yeah, so people, I, people think I'm crazy, but my friends are like, seriously, bro. And I'm like, what? I can't like, <laughs> be like a, the head of a drug cartel and be a <laughs> what? Who says? Who says? <laughs> so yeah. so 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 you know one one last Star Wars question. Um, yeah. a lot of people are hard on the last three, right? Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh last jedi rise of skywalker um but people are people i think people connected with the mandalorian they were like well this is what it quote unquote should have been mm-hmm. were you that disappointed in those three movies because i don't i think the last jedi is a lot better than people give it credit for that's me i was i was confused yeah with the films i i wasn't i i didn't have an allergic reaction right, the way yeah. certain fandom people do uh, I'm I'm a little disappointed in the reaction to the fandom because from the fandom because it, it, like for me as a Star Wars fan this is my own personal opinion that like everything that is Star Wars good bad or indifferent it's Star Wars right oh, that's so well said it, it just oh. is right and so and so and so I so here's what I have said recently to people I'm like look. The sequel trilogy is like finding out your favorite uncle dealt drugs. <laughs> You're like, but he's my uncle. <laughs> yeah, that's right? yeah. Like, he's, he's, but he's still my uncle, right? Yeah. So for me, there were some things. Sure, there were some things that that hurt. There, there were some things that hurt. I agree. Uh, watching, I agree. Watching Skywalker toss his lightsaber over his shoulder hurt. Yeah. That, uh, so, so I, so I'm not saying, you know, that I'm like, ah, but with them, but, but, but the little things like that hurt, but then, yeah, man, rise of Skywalker. I was like, okay, I was there. I was at, I was in Chicago. I was in the room with another 40,000 people. When, when we heard Palpatine's voice, I thought, 
we're good. Right. We're good. I heard his voice and I thought we're good because some of it felt like the first two rises, uh, 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 the Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Last Jedi just sort of. I was just confused. That's all. I I, I didn't I I didn't hate them. I was just confused. And the way the last the, the the Force Awakens ends, you're like, wow, we've got some hope here. You're right. Yeah. And I think that the major issues, not to dissect Star Wars here, but the major issues come with their handling of Skywalker. I think that's. I, I think, think people. So. I think you're right. I, I think, think you're right. So, right, because there's certain things that you're just like. If you go into a pizza shop, I'm a New Yorker, right? Yeah, yeah. You go into a pizza shop. I'm not. I, I gave up a long time ago trying to figure out. Trying to trying to make sure that I find a pizza shop outside of New York that tastes like New York pizza. I just I stopped looking for it a long time. I gave up on that, right? Right. And so in so in doing so, all I'm asking when I go into a pizza shop <laughs> is that it's made of dough, tomato sauce, and cheese. That's it. Right. Now right. if you're taking some of that away and telling me it's pizza, <laughs> I'm gonna be confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Like that, that god awful Chicago deep dish. I don't stuff. know. Say so you just you start you start taking away the three basic ingredients. I agree. You, you know your dough, your pizza dough, your tomato sauce, your cheese. That's it, right? Yeah. And so there was a little bit of that. I felt like I felt like there, I was a little confused. Where I'm like, well, wait, but where's the sauce? Like, where's the cheese? Like, where is that stuff that mm. I mean, you know, right? And that's why I started to get confused. But across, the, I mean, the the kids are all great. I think the actors are all fully committed. There was not one bit of miscasting the, the entire time. Uh, so everyone fit their their roles perfectly and uh and and played the roles you know to to the to the thing. And there is still there's some the magic was there, but yes, it was a little confusing for me with the with the sequel trilogies. And yeah, I understand there's people talking about trying to figure out a way to uh to to sort of uh take them out of canon and make them their own individual set of three films that then we can then pick up and, and actually do something that might continue the saga, but that's all yeah. talk. Yeah. Are you excited with the projects on television? The, the Kenobi, the, I am. yeah, I am, I am, I am. I suffer from, I've been doing this long enough that I suffer from a little bit too much. I, I suffer from this sort of x-ray vision. Right. <laughs> I, can, I can look at a poster and know how you, I tell you how the film ends. And so I'm, I'm just trying so hard to stay. Everybody's like, have you seen the trailer? And I'm like, don't tell me anything, you know? Right. I mean, I'm so far. So I'm, I'm so, easily spoiled or easily uh not spoiled I, I can tell what's going on and dig it so much that for example a buddy of mine who's a collector was like hey so uh you know do you still have your lars owen figure and i'm like oh, why'd you say that <laughs> why'd you even ask me that now when <laughs> the lars owen shows up in the yeah 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 yeah. Um, then, yeah no i'm excited i'm excited i i love i love the uh I love what they're doing. I love what John Favreau is doing. I, I had the pleasure of meeting Paul Lee recently in Vancouver. I was working on, on a TV show that I do in Vancouver, and and uh, and I met Paul Lee, who's fantastic. Paul Lee is the the bearded X wing fighter who appears That's in the right. movie and then tries to yeah yes. yeah. yeah. So I met him recently, and and I brought my Yoda figures with me to dinner. We were at this fancy steakhouse, and I just pulled out my holographic Yoda, and I put, next, I put him next to my holographic Darth uh, Count Dooku. And I was like, they're like, what? I was like, well, I brought my figures with me to dinner. Everybody's like, this is like a five-star steakhouse. <laughs> I brought my boys with me. <laughs> Man, you are you are the real deal. And, and yeah, who would have, you know, and who would have like, like, I hope people watching this see the other side of you, right? They, they see the characters you portray, but like, yeah. to see how passionate you are in your your personal life. Uh, just my last thing on Star Wars. Uh, I, I read today where they took out, they wrote in Darth Maul and then they took him out. So that kind of sucks, you know, yeah. with Ken yeah. Kenobi. But, you know, I guess there's only time for so much. Uh, yeah, I think that storyline really, really was really well done yeah. in the Rebels. In that in that in that wonderful storyline during Rebels, where they find each other in that barren desert, and they're and he's holding him like a friend, and it's like that's that was really beautiful stuff. That I think, when in doubt, and if you feel like you want it, give yourself the option to just go ahead and take a look at it from the Rebels' perspective, and I think you'll I think you'll uh, 
I think you'll be okay with yeah. him not being in it. But and that's yeah. the other thing, Felix. People don't realize how much great content is in the animated stuff. Like, yeah. like, like a lot of the heart of it is it's beautiful. Clone it's all Wars, there. The Clone yes. Wars. There is a full generation, Derek, of people who have never seen the films. I met people in Chicago at Celebration who are Clone Wars generation fans. W without having all seen the original three? Clone, all they know about Star Wars is Clone Wars. There are children who were raised with just watching the Clone Wars. And then have this generational thing, like you and I, we're connected to the original trilogy because we were born in that era and that's when it was and that's what changed us. What has changed children? I've met literally 20 year olds, 30 year olds who have been like, yeah, I'm a Clone Wars fan. I don't, I, I'm a Clone Wars. And you're like, yeah, because that was a whole, that filled a gap that we as adults, by the time that Clone Wars came out, you and I were chasing chicks we were doing whatever and and so that never made its way in but 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 people who didn't have that access or people who decided the the, the movies are too they're not young enough they're not old enough to watch the movies i'm gonna we can watch the clone wars and so kids grew up with just the clone wars that was their introduction to star wars was the clone Wars series right right which is great you know yeah great. yeah yeah you know, and i want to i want to segue into ozark and i want to do so using a little bit of star wars um your performance as um uh you know navarro is just out of this world it's Thank just you. it's all and i gotta say i'm not just saying this because we're speaking it legitimately is one of the best performances i've seen in years like it's just so realistic and every time he's on screen like I can feel my palms getting like wet. Like he's, it's no joke, man. So is there anybody in the star Wars universe you could compare him to? I mean, I was trying to think of a lead in from there. Is there anybody that's has some of his qualities? Maybe. I think that if I had to liken him to anyone in the universe, he'd probably be sitting somewhere in the Cad Bane world. Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's just very quiet and, and, and very uh, just he's very simple. He knows exactly what he there's no no tomfoolery about Cad Bane, you know. Uh and 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 I, I would. I'd 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 sit him side by side with maybe with Cad Bane. Yeah, great, great comparison. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and I want to throw some things at you. Whatever you can say, say. And I don't want to, you know, obviously we're we're approaching about a month away, the second half of sure. the, the final season. I don't want to get you in any kind of trouble. Sure. Um, would you agree when people describe uh, Navarro as um, short tempered and calculated? I feel like he's so much deeper than that. Like, yeah, that's yeah, part man. of it. Yeah, that is part of that is part of it. Uh, you're very right. I I. I chose to play a guy who 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 is self-made, uh, was not given anything. Everything he he has, he's earned, and kind of he's a man who runs a business and he's got to make the best choices for his business. And he loves his family very much, and he takes care of those who who work for him. He loves them all. He's a he's a good businessman. He's a very good, honest, straightforward businessman. Yeah, uh, and uh, and and in doing so, uh, has to make some very difficult choices from time to time. And unfortunately, to, in the world that he does business in, the decisions he has to make are specifically for the world. That he does business in mm, mm. And the draw that he has to these two what would assume to be non in the world of his business characters draws him even more because he sees normalcy he sees sort of a logical legitimate what has been not given to him in his world which is legitimacy he sees that and he sees the opportunity and being a smart businessman he knows he knows what he needs to do he needs to enlist the help of these people who will give him legitimacy yeah, yeah. uh but but yes but calculating I, I mean you know i i like to i like to uh 
I'll take that as a compliment from those who say that. Oh, and it was it was a compliment the way I read yeah, it. Yeah, what, yeah. What, they're, what, they're, what I'm hoping they're saying is this is how I see him. And then, Derek, you'll see him as somebody else. And then my my dad sees him as somebody else. And, and, and my friends see him as somebody else. And I go, great. I've been able to, like, like uh, James Earl Jones once said about acting, he said, you, what you need to do is you need to have ropes that you shoot from your character out to every single person watching you. And then once all those ropes have connected everyone who's watching, you send the story through those ropes to those people. And what you hope is that what the story that that connects to that audience member is different than the rope that was connected to that one and that one and that one. And so you give yourself a complete varied, multi-layered performance that gives the audience their own personal opinion about the character. Right. No, yeah. Yeah. And, and through your long and, and illustrious career, you you've been on both sides, right? You played the FBI agent and you pil- yeah. you're at the other end right now in Ozark with yeah. Omar Navarro playing, you know, head of the Mexican drug cartel. Yeah. Um, it, do you find and I tried to, a, a perfect way to, to phrase this question. Have you found that working being that FBI agent, you found ways you can effectively, you know, to, ways to portray um, Navarro? In other words, being on the other end of the spectrum. Do you yeah. get i do you get ideas from playing that that I don't want to call him a villain, but yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Do you get ideas from other performances you've had, and like, does that give you ideas? Does it spark thought? I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a reference actor, Derek. Yeah. I'm a reference actor. I I don't I I find it very difficult to uh, to genuinely give deliver a performance if I don't have a reference. Some people will agree and disagree. My own personal way of going approaching every every character that I play, I gotta have a reference. That's not to say that if I'm playing a drug dealer, I'm gonna go out and become a drug dealer. Right. It just means if I'm playing somebody who's 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 working in a very hostile environment, I have to be able to go. Okay, where was I? Or I, oh yes, I remember that time that I took my trip to to Morocco and landed at four in the morning and had to find my way to my hotel, to my Riyadh at four in the morning inside of a Medina in the heart of Morocco. And I'd never been there and it felt dangerous. Right. It felt right. dangerous. Yeah. But yeah. I have that experience. I have that reference. So I can reference that when I'm now sitting in a room playing a guy who does that. I have references of trying to convince people that if they don't do what I'm telling them to do, there will be some kind of consequence to pay. I have that reference. Right. So I right. use that reference. I need to be able to have some kind of reference. And in doing so, I layer that reference into into uh, into the characters that I play. Yeah. And I. Yeah, and I've heard um, Ray Liotta. I think said this for, for Goodfellas. He said, I, I think he hung around guys that were in the in the maf- the mafia. Sure. And he was he was learning. He was learning. He got feedback after the movie came out. Yeah. Um, did you do you find that you get? I'm going to be careful how I phrase this. Do you find that you get feedback from all walks of life on your oh, performance? Yeah. I mean, oh, you, you mentioned your dad, which is awesome. I'm so happy he's still with us. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah um, do you get feedback from like? all walks of life of you know that's accurate that may not be accurate do you, do you get that kind of stuff absolutely yeah uh, uh i have i have uh i have someone who helps me i don't i don't sort of monitor my own social media because it's i i'm a dinosaur i, I i'll just mess it up i don't know how to really do it so i have some people who help me do it right yeah 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 <laughs> I don't know how to do that, but, but, uh, like I, I recently got a message from someone and I didn't know. And then I saw them again and they were looking at me funny. I'm like, why are they looking at me funny? And I realized, Oh my goodness, they sent me a message. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so I don't know. I don't, but in doing so, I have had conversations with people who helped me with that, who have said, uh, so you got a message from somebody in Colombia, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. And they're like, they like you. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, sure. And then there's people who were like, you know, uh, I'm please don't hurt me. You know, I recently, I don't think it's uh, too uh, private to say I recently got a, a pretty threatening uh, message that I had to actually report to the police. Uh, and it had to do with the fact that they thought that I they they thought that I thought that they believed that I was the person that they were watching, and they thought that they could, uh, you know, 
take care of me. <laughs> oh my uh, so God! With that, so 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 yes, I do. I get it from I get it from all war, and then I get it from like I got it. I uh, my uh, assistant told me the other day that I got it from a. I got a message from like a sixteen-year-old who's like, "How do I do what you do on TV, and and how do how do I get to be such a great actor?" And I thought they're referencing the performance and not yeah. referencing the character. And I thought, okay, so yes. Derek, yeah. to answer you in a, in a shorter way, I have gotten it from all walks of life, yeah, from yeah. Uh, across the globe. And I think that that's what has fascinated me the most about this particular role in this particular show is that the net in Netflix is huge. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. I get messages from Istanbul, from Croatia, from Spain, from Brazil, from Colombia, from Mexico, from all over the world, South Africa, it, like all over the world. I've gotten people saying, we love your show. We watch it. We love your show and all of that. Which is which is what every actor wants to hear, right? That's you want to hear from that sixteen year old that wants to know your method. You want to hear from those people. That's yeah. the ultimate compliment of your work, right, Felix? Of course, yeah, because you want to feel like you're 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 uh, you're contributing yeah. in some way. Yeah, and I and I gotta say, I, I was shocked. I mean, just we're gonna get a few plot points here. Then thank you yeah. for all this time. You're such a good man. Thank you for this. No uh, you know, and, and what happened to Helen? I have to say, I wasn't shocked by that because I feel like when you mm -hmm. enter this world, right. Mm -hmm. There's only two ways you leave. One is where uh, uh, Navarro is now, and the other is where Helen is now. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two ways you leave this world. So to me, I, and I look to my wife, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how anybody can go in this world. You really have to, you have to be like, you have to have this like, uh, I don't no. know, something of steel because it's, you know, it's, it's going to no, probably. No. Yeah, no one is safe. No, no. And, and when people talk about the worst character, not performance, but like mm -hmm. who's the most evil, it's not even close, in my opinion, who it is. And maybe you could shit inside. Right. You can when you talk about the worst people, Navarro's not even in the top three. <laughs> Wendy Bird by far is the worst person on this show. <laughs> I mean, killing your brother, you know, bring your yeah. kids, bring your kids into the drug trade, yeah. and then is confused why everybody's angry at her. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. No, of course. And and what's interesting is that I'm just getting myself more lit. Uh, uh, what's interesting is that it's uh, it's like like we talked about just recently. It's 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 uh, that's a that's a that's a divided universe. Like there are Wendy, like Team Wendy, and then there's Team Marty, and there's Team Navarro, and there's Team Ruth, and there's Team like there's people who side with. There's people who will disagree with that. There's people who agree with that. There's people who think that Marty's worse. That like it's a fantastic world where you have, uh, you have it's 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 a it's a well. I mean, kudos to the creators and to Chris Mundy who wrote it, and 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 the, and the others who were involved. That 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 you were able to layer so well a, an entire group of characters that you you do you have an option. You have a you have a team to root for like you would in a in a league, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so well said. But you know, it's just to me, it's just like with with Omar, what you see is what you get. Sure, sure. You know, with Wendy, it's like she'll smile and then she'll kill you two seconds later. Like it's it's she's she. Is, I don't know how anybody can be Team Wendy. She's without question the worst. Uh, uh, the worst. Well, I'm, I'm Team Laura Linney. I'll just say that I'm Team Laura Linney. That oh, she's. Is, I mean, she's a phenomenal. I cannot tell you how. In they broke the mold. They broke the mold when they made her. There's yeah. there's no one like her. And and there for a, for a myriad of reasons I can give you. But but yes, she she's she's. To her credit, that 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 character is it's great. It's a wonderful balance between love and hate. And how did you do that? How could you do I I watch, I watched, I was on the edge of my seat while watching, going, she's about to give up her brother. She's about to give up her brother. I'm like, and I <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. know, and it's like it's it's funny that you said it because it's you know, it reminds me of what Philip Seymour Hoffman told you. Like, I have to imagine if I had a chance to speak with Jason Bateman or Laura Linney, they would say 
to me what Philip Hawthorne said to you, like, I never have to worry about him. Like, he's just going to do his job. That's definitely how they feel about you. There's no question. My father is, uh, he's a carpenter, a plumber, an electrician, and he's a superintendent. Uh, he's a worker. Yeah. And, uh, and I learned my work ethic from him, which is you show up, you're prepared, you do your job right, you do it to the best of your ability, because all you can hope for is when you leave, that their toilet flushes, that their fridge works, that their floor doesn't creak, that the door locks, because that's what you've done. That's mm. all you need. Mm. And then once you've done that and you can walk away from it, then, then you're all right. Because then you have a chance that maybe that woman who you fixed the door for says, hey, listen, if you ever need a guy <laughs> to fix a door, yeah, go out and call the guy. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, Felix, one of the things that um, Omar keeps asking or Navarro keeps asking for is, you know, he wants the F he wants um, uh, uh, the the birds to get him to tell the FBI to get him off scot free. Right. Yeah. And I don't know how it ends. And, I, and and if this is too close to home, you definitely don't have to answer it. Sure. But I almost feel like just just to, just say he gets his freedom. Right. Let's just say, you know, Navarro gets that freedom. I don't think he'd ever be free. He's always looking over his shoulder. And I think, and tell me if I'm over analyzing here. Do you, I feel like he, with, with the baptism and, and having his family, I feel like he's seen the light in a lot of ways. Like I'm done with this, but I still have to be tough because I don't want to get knocked off. So there's a lot going on, but yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how he could ever get that freedom because he's always going to be looking over that shoulder. Yeah. You know, well, I can speak to a scene that has already been seen. Okay. Which is that very first scene in the in the beginning of the fourth episode where where he says the you know the threat will always come from the inside, right? Yeah, uh, and he mentions it to to uh, to to Marty in a way that that says you know those who are closest to you might be the ones who who ruin you, right? Who end you, and and uh, and I think that that is true throughout the whole of this saga you know that little boy is dangerously close to ruining wendy and marty's lives their son yeah ruth wyatt is dangerously close to destroying everything she's trying to build like everyone has someone close to them that is their biggest threat and and uh and I think that that's sort of the the magic and the and the and the edge of your seat, if you will, about this final season is you just you never know, you don't know, you don't know who and why. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, and I have a theory, and you, you can't answer this, but you know they they've teased the, the audience with the van flipping over. I think Felix, this is me. I think that. I think the three of them get out, the two kids and, and, and Marty get out. I think Wendy somehow is trapped. And I think because Marty's been trying to get out of this for so long, he, he wants to be out of this drug trade. He's, his kids are now sucked in. And the only person that keeps bringing them back in is Wendy. I think that they can't get Wendy out and they just leave her. To, but maybe I'm just guessing. That, I don't I mean, know. Again, like I'm telling you, that's the fantastic thing about this show is that it allows you to have your own own concept theory uh, uh uh prediction you know that it's great it's it's fantastic that you're even compelled enough Derek to say I think this is what happens that's that's the 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 draw that's the allure that's the magic that's the uniqueness of Ozark is that it gives you it makes you want to think about what you're wanting to see. It generates your imagination. It does not do the work for you. It doesn't hold your hand. It gives you what it gives you, and then it allows you to just fly with it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, fantastic. yes. And think about all the shows on every streaming network, how many great shows there are. This is the ultimate water cooler show. This is the <laughs> one that people are talking about next to the Keurig machine. Uh, one last thing. I want to put something on the screen for you. I could not stop laughing at this. No. Uh, <laughs> I hope you find it as funny as I did. Yeah. Marty, make the <laughs> for those listening on the podcast, Marty, make me that guy give me twenty ten million dollars and the cure for cancer. You have ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> is that 
That's yeah. fantastic. That's pretty yeah. accurate, That's right? Fantastic. Yeah. That's very sweet. That's very sweet. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I'm not on social media. I don't do social media, so I don't. I, I don't get a chance to enjoy those kinds of things. But that's fantastic. There was another one recently that somebody sent me that said, "Have you seen this?" And I said, "No. What is it?" And it's there's a gentleman who is impersonating Omar Navarro, <laughs> and he's in his car. And he's talking to his wife and he's explaining to her where they're going for dinner. But he's doing it in, in Omar Navarro style. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fantastic. I love it. I love the, it. The it's fact so that good. you're 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 a, you're the key part of this show, like you're a very key part. That's gotta as an actor, I mean, it's just that's gotta blow you away. I mean, well deserved too. Uh, thank you. I uh yeah, I mean, I I I I I I because I'm a fan of the show. I uh, I pull a little bit of a, a sort of Marlon Brando with the work where I, I just grab my scenes when I get the script. I just grab my scenes. I try not to read anything that, that my character is not directly involved in or with. One, because in, in reality, I wouldn't know that they were having that conversation. So why would I need to know it? And right. hear it? But two, I also do that so that I literally can still remain a fan of the show and be a part of the show right yeah. and uh and so that's sort of uh that's sort of uh exciting for me it allows that to happen so i wouldn't i would have never been able to tell you off the bat that i that that omar is sort of the the grounding piece of what's happening but when i watch the show i go oh yeah they're involved and this is going on and it's sort of centered around this uh agreement that they, that they've made with this man and and uh yeah, I mean it's kind of cool. I I, I, uh, I, uh, I I turned I I shied away from these kinds of characters for quite a while, Derek. I shied away from them. I I tried I tried uh, for almost ten years. I tried not to play this this character. Right, right. And uh, and then and then something happened. I I. Uh, I wasn't getting the things I wanted, right? And I don't mean that like I was asking for them and I wasn't getting them. I meant right. I was auditioning for the roles that I would have liked to have played and I wasn't getting them, right? I wasn't booking them. And uh, and I remembered sitting in my car and I was in Washington Boulevard facing the water of Venice Beach and and uh, and I just sat there and I had just finished meditating and after I came out my meditation, I just I kind of said to the universe, all right, listen, I think you're trying to send me a message. And if I'm correct, the message is whatever I want to be playing right now is not what I'm going to be playing. So whatever it is that you're going to send my way that you think I should be doing, I will give it my all. I will not judge it. I will not reject it. I will not get on a high horse and say, I, I will just simply humbly say that this is what I think you want me to play. Therefore, I will give it my all. And 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 that was the that was the audition that came my way was the character of Omar Navarro and I said okay all right this is the stuff that I've been shying away from but if this is what I'm supposed to do then I'm going to do it and I just made it I made a simple humble choice which was to to not play the stereotype I just felt like if I can just show them truth groundedness earnest honest truth yeah you meet a guy at a bar you gotta have a great conversation where are you from i'm from mexico oh, that's fantastic yeah well what do you do oh i have my own business i run my own business that's the guy i wanted to be the guy that you would meet and then later as you're shaking your hand and say have a nice flight you walk away you go did you just have a conversation with a drug lord? Right? <laughs> you, know, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 no, yeah. You get home and you see the news and you go, "Oh my goodness, he just got arrested." That's the guy I was talking to at the bar. Yeah, yeah. Was, no, man, was, and was, nobody else could play it like you play. It. And and you've got enough in your filmography where you've done a lot of different roles. You know, you know. I mean, I do agree to a point. Like, we need to open roles up for those that are Latino and like. Yeah. But but I feel like what you're doing, you've made it your own. You've made it. It's not the stereotypical drug dealer. You know, what you've done is special. And I think that's what adds to the show. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I appreciate you saying that. I, I, I was, I have always been, and will always continue to strive for human, for humanistic, for the human element of a person, as opposed to the, uh, the, the archetype or the formulaic or you know. I just, I'm, I'm going to try to do that because 
I know no other way. I was raised by two hardworking people who have no experience in the entertainment industry whatsoever. I was raised by two people who said, you be good, you be kind, you be the best person you can possibly be. The rest will take care of itself and, and trust that. And, yeah. uh, and your, your pop must be so proud of you. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's funny. He makes fun of me from time to time, you know, but, but that's all right. He's like, why you gotta yeah. go, you know, why you gotta go do that? And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah. but he did, he did notice something that I had actually worked really hard to do. I had asked, I had politely, kindly asked that, that, when considering the further uh, the the future of this character when i first started playing him that they that they omit his curses that he doesn't curse that he's a yeah. man curse and and i made that simple request humble request because again it was going to help me humanize this guy ground this guy in a way that makes him less of a oh i know who that is so i don't have to pay attention yeah yeah it's more like oh this is a very interesting man right and funny enough when, when the show started airing my dad was like yeah, you know you don't curse and i said no i don't he said mm. <laughs> that's about <laughs> that's what he does mm. that was no, that that's a huge observation i never even picked up on that yeah, that's that's what I mean. It, it wasn't. It's not something that I wanted to be like. Look, me. I'm not cursing. It was just I knew that it, that one of the one of the easiest ways for me. Easy is not the right word. One of the most creative ways that I could think of trying to ground him was just to see if I can just pull it away. Just pull yeah. it away. Yeah, uh, because that's... because because of I also as a as a as a young actor my my side gigs were I would I was a teaching artist I taught uh, uh, I helped teach uh, I worked with a playwright in, at 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 at, uh, at Rikers Island in their in their incarceration facilities I, and I worked with inmates and then they the playwrights would help them write plays and then we as actors would come and show them the process of the actor and do readings and so on and so forth and these plays were riddled with curses right these are all kids who have just been denied 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 who are angry 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 and so all they could spit out on a page is f this and f this and f this and I I remember distinctly when I'm do, when I was doing those programs is find watching the playwright find a way to let them know that look this word doesn't mean as much if you say it 700 times mm. but if you never say it and then you say it it hits in a certain way and i thought to myself and i, I just remembered that from my teaching artist years and i thought okay well maybe that's what can happen is that I can just pull it away. So if in fact I do, right? If and do, if in fact the producers, the writers, they say to me, he's got a curse right now. I go, great. I can do that. Because I haven't done it up until now. Right, right, right. No, that's awesome. That's 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 what makes a character yours. And um uh, my, I really hope he gets Javi, though. I really I'm dying for him to get Javi. Uh another great actor too. Yeah, Javi, he's fantastic. Oof, like fantastic. What what a team they are! Um, Alfonso Herrero is, is just fantastic actor. Yeah, and he he said some wonderful things about you in some interviews I was reading. So yeah, uh, let's leave the interview with this. Um, whatever you have down the road, uh, just please throw it out there. Uh, and also Subway Token Films, whatever you want to say about either or. Yeah, I uh, Subway Token Films was a was a production company that my partner Lisa Fernandez and I started. Basically, it was an, it, it was a, it was a, out of sort of necessity. We had been asked by her parents to go and help. The, uh, they owned a vineyard in Chile, and uh, we had been asked to go and help them at the vineyard. And I had never been to Chile, and I thought, well, well, what we're going to go for a month? We let's just make a movie. <laughs> let's go and make a movie. And we wrote right. a short, and and it's helpful if you write a short and you produce it and you put it together that you attach it to some kind of. Uh, uh, production company right and so we began subway token films obviously inspired by by uh by the new york city subway which is where the everydayers go which is about then that's the stories we're trying to tell stories about everydayers and we add the magic by saying that there's this street level miracle that's sort of the the phrase we've coined which is the one thing that happens despite us 
that changes the way we see things in our lives. And so we layer that in, and that's what it is. Subway Token Films, we do short films about the everydayers and their experience having street level miracles come into their lives. And that's sort of Subway Token Films. Uh, and, and it's great. We're, we're currently working, we're still trying. You know, it's, it's sort of, it's our little shop. It's like the little shop we have in the garage, you know, and uh, and we keep working on it and we keep going at it. And we'll eventually add something else and do some other fun stuff with it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's it. I'm currently I'm currently working on a on a backdoor spin spin off of a, of a television show that's on ABC right now called The Rookie. Uh, and they're hoping to do a sort of backdoor pilot spin off that uh, takes the concept of The Rookie. Uh, out of the Los Angeles Police Department and introduces it in the Los Angeles Bureau of uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation. So now, is that a, is that a definite Felix, or is that just a pilot? Is that a pilot? Yeah. Or have well, they-, they call it a backdoor pilot, right? The, the, yeah. so the backdoor pilot is a, is a way where they introduce the characters that would be in the spinoff in the already established storyline right so for example our characters are introduced because the los angeles police department has to team up with the fbi to help bring down a potential terror suspect and when they go to the fbi they're introduced to matthew garza and uh, uh uh other agents i play matthew garza and other agents who were then brought in so it becomes like this joint task force and then two episodes we watch them work together and at the same time we're meeting these characters that will uh hopefully be be enjoyed loved and and, and given their own spin-off and so then it becomes sort of a multi-world similar to the chicago world you know where you have chicago pd you have chicago fire you have chicago md and they sort of all interweave and interact with each other inside the world very cool and i gotta tell you man thank you for all this time it was so great yeah. to finally talk to you you yeah. are you are the real deal man is never yeah. forget the way i think about you as an actor which is off the chart but as a human being this is one of my favorite interviews i've ever done like yeah. thank you so I much for that it, thank uh, you for asking me i i hope our paths cross at a comic-con one day they probably will i mean yeah you know, yeah, there's a lot of them coming up. Although, I mean, I mean, I'm still wearing my mask. So I'm still a Brady cat about this whole thing. But, but <laughs> no, me too. Me too. I wear. I'm. I'm a mask guy. I. I. I still I believe in it. So, to. I mean, I have to. I test positive. I shut down production. So I have to wear it. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but I'm still sort of a little shy about about you know groups and people. I'm going to take my first foray into a large group uh uh soon when i go to you know celebration in in, uh, in anaheim for for star wars celebration this year but but yeah yeah but we'll see each other at something man we'll see each other at a comic con or something yeah i mean i'll be cheering for you the second half of uh ozark the the i think it's like mid-april it comes out do you know how it ends april 29th i don't okay okay i, I told you. you i removed yeah. my scenes i got you i, I got you i, got I you. know where my character goes yeah okay anything all right else. Sure, I told you. I want to still be a fan and watch. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. But no, I just th- thank you so much. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll be cheering for you. And not only in Ozark, but moving forward, uh, you're, you're an easy guy to cheer for. I appreciate you.